Hello my soccer universe, West Ham and their title draw, the first European title since 65 and uh, I think also the first proper title since the early 80s when they won the FA Cup in a final that I have to say was at times a little bit too tedious that actually West Ham kept a little bit too tight and I think it was also unfortunately highly conditioned by the West Ham fans um, I honestly feel in this case a little bit gutted that Fiorentina did not win it. This game had, uh, to me, this game had the same uh, complexion as did the Europa League final, except that now the more defensive team did win. Uh, don't get me wrong. Overall, I mean, ahead of the game, uh, yes, I was, I was always going to be for Fiorentina um, in that one, but I didn't really mind if West Ham won. However, with the antics of the West Ham fans during the game, and it's not a single fan, these were multiple fans um, that were throwing cups onto the pitch. And also again, we have to talk a little bit about the refereeing, and I hate to do it. I'm not saying the referee stole that game for Fiorentina, by far not, never gonna happen. However, um, I think when the incident happened with the cups, I would have loved that... Uh, Del Cerro Grande takes the players off the pitch or intervenes even sooner. Um, so yeah, this was kind of, uh, for me, the downer. I really want to see it also from the bright side um, that, you know, we had a team again that had a horrible season like Sevilla in West Ham that was fighting against relegation salvaging that season by winning a European trophy. I also uh, don't want to hear anything of the like that why wasn't this played in a bigger stadium because I actually am really really happy that they play these finals in small stadiums because this competition is yes there were two teams from two big nations there however this is a competition for the smaller nations uh, that you know you get all, already in the groups which some smaller nations uh, also smaller teams can get some European experience plus that the final can be hosted by a smaller nation in a city like Prague that is a great city but for some reason Prague doesn't really have a great stadium or the Czech Republic I, I'm still uh, puzzled by that that they don't have a huge national stadium I mean in Prague there is probably the biggest stadium in the world in there although it's now falling apart but that was not a football stadium because there fit seven football pitches in there something like like crazy like that so you know um that aside i was actually happy to see such a final played in a smaller stadium of course the stadium a little bit contributed to the misbehavior by the west ham fans but let's get into the game just a little bit um as, as, as i said I, I actually also like the opening series as i remember with with the guys and guitars coming out i mean i did not hear the music all too well and it doesn't really really matter whenever there's a dj uh, and guitars this is something that doesn't quite mix for me but okay so 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 we did uh the game itself i mean it started out with west ham a for a shortest of us on the front foot i mean antonio had a shot in the first for first minute and i think Declan rice put one wide However, um, West Ham mostly kept it tight and they didn't allow Fiorentina to play their game. Fiorentina, Fiorentina uh, was allowed large swaths of possession, um, but they couldn't get into the high press because uh, West Ham just didn't let them. West Ham just sat deep and uh, didn't allow Fiorentina their game and, act and actually attack them at times. Maybe not as high as Fiorentina tends to do, but attack them. However, after the opening part, there was a clear, because of that tactic, a clear gap uh, between uh, the defensive structure of West Ham and then the Opaketas and Michael Antonios and so on up front. And Michael Antonio also, I think, except for that shot, he didn't have a really great game. He never could nail down the ball or, 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 or whatever. It was all very much conditioned by Fiorentina. And the one thing I have to say, I think Fiorentina had very often the right ideas, but they didn't have the skills to um, to assert himself or you to make the pass or to find the right pass to run past the defender. You could see that uh, the idea that the coach has, and coach Italiano is now heavily linked with the job at Napoli, so the idea that coach uh, Italiano has 
and the players that he has, there is a clear gap there. Because a slightly more skilled team, or let's say if the coaches were reversed, I think the players of West Ham are just a tad above the players of Fiorentina. The players, uh, so you could see that there is a good idea there, but they just cannot get it over the line. And Fiorentina, for all their pressing and and, and so on, they cannot play themselves really out of it. That's the feeling that I got the entire first and large spots of the second half as well. Um, yes, Fiorentina dominated. They tried to create, but it was always the last pass that was missing. Another thing that conditioned the final very early on was the physicality of West Ham, because Fiorentina players were lying on the floor like crazy, like all the time. And this was not time wasting. I, in this case, I really think that they were uh, they were just uh, being physically physically put out of the game in a way. Um, and then, of course, it happened very early on that Nico Gonzalez fell down in, in the box because he got touched in the face. And if you see in the replay, he really got touched in the face. Maybe he made more of it. However, West Ham fans were not having that. They were targeting him and were throwing already a cup and, I already said, uh, and were already throwing cups towards him. And I was already saying it at this point, at the first cup thrown, the referee needs to step in. This was allowed them to continue because Fiorentina was attacking towards the side. It was exactly the side where the Lions woman was standing. And she was also kind of helpless there. And whenever Fiorentina player, and especially Nico Gonzalez was there, cups got thrown at, at him. I mean, he tried to take it um, kind of on the chin. At one point, he was catching a cup and uh, pretended to drink out, out, out of it before realizing, yeah, you know, it's not going to happen. Uh, it's not a smart thing to do. And threw it off, but then she'd really hit the fan uh, in the 30th minute when Biragi was stepping up to take a corner and uh, cups were raining down him for no apparent reason and even hitting him on the head and he had this gash uh, opening here on the back of, all, of the head had to be properly bandaged. The one thing that you have to say about Biragi and I loved his reaction. I mean, it would have been so natural to just go down and pretend no. Biragi, he is a real leader. He stood up there, got hit, turned towards the Western fans, and great guys, you're a really great man. That was his reaction. And then just walked and said, okay, you saw the blood come, coming down, really, really uh, saw that, uh, that, that, that he gets medical treatment. Um, at that point, that's the point where the referee has to take the players off the pitch. I understand this is a huge final and this is a great, you know, it's a huge, huge final. It gets broadcast everywhere. Um, there is a lot of pressure to have this on, you know, TV schedules and so on. However, at this moment, the referee has to take, this needs to take uh, precedence. I mean, I felt there was pressure until Cerro Grande, uh, internal pressure. I'm not saying he was out there to kind of get this game over the line and, and uh, get it done. But these were CSC situations where he should have stepped in and at that time the final also got a little bit hard to referee because uh the players you know the physicality was there and so and, and so on and he didn't react properly to it in my opinion um also i don't understand i i hope it was talking with concern to biragi but the way Declan rice came up to biragi it seemed a little bit more confrontational than anything else. Uh, I might be completely wrong, but it didn't have the right feeling to me. It really did not have the way he came and his expression on the face. And maybe I'm interpreting too, too, too much, but it didn't sit well with me. This was the point where I said, now, uh, I don't want those Western fans to be rewarded for their behavior. They should not win the title. Absolutely not. And for the rest of the for our first half, I'm with Fiorentina again. Uh, Two little means to uh, get it done. And they score a goal. However, Jovic was offside. I think that goal would have done the game really, really, really well. So, yeah, we go into the um, second half. And not much changes. Uh, Jovic came off. Cabral came on. Uh, then a little bit later. Uh, then Fiorentina again tried to control the game. Tried to create chances, but didn't really have the means. And then with the one say situation in front of the, uh, in front of Fiorentina box, Biragi becomes the you know 
<laughs> the non-hero by uh, yeah Jared Jared Bond controls the ball and he goes with the hand out I'm not even sure this was all that intended because uh, the way he here just but it's clear you see a push towards the ball it is unfortunately a clear penalty as much as I didn't want to see that it's, it's a clear penalty when Rachma stand, uh, stands up and converts at the same time uh, Kwame who actually had a few shots for Fiorentina but I actually thought he, he was a real weak link uh, was replaced by Saponara, who I actually like because I really like some Saponara's play. Uh, so it's 1 0 for West Ham. West Ham players were celebrating like they had already won, won the cup. I think the celebrations took a little bit too long for my liking. I understand this is not a CAC situation you're in uh, very, 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 very often, but um, and I don't want to be the fun police, but I found that a little bit too excessive, honestly. However, fortunately, Fiorentina could quickly equalize um, where uh, Bonavent, uh, 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 cross come, come, comes in. I think it was by Amrabat uh, that Nico Gonzalez, a small man, wins the header, gets to Bonaventura, who makes a really great finish. It was not a hard shot. It seemed like a soft goal at first. But if you look at it, he actually has a really, really nice control and gets it in. And Bonaventura gets the equalizer, and then the San Fiorentino fans also celebrate very, very passionately. Not as much as West Ham, but they also celebrate very passionately. And then there was a short period where I really thought the Fiorentina can totally turn to the game, especially when Mandragora uh, had a great shot that he just pulls all white from goal. If that goes in, Fiorentina win that cup. However, um, uh, West Ham had a little bit more stamina, were a little bit then um, more present to it in the last 10 minutes. Uh, and Fiorentina tried, but uh, there was a little bit more coming from West Ham. And then there was in the in, in midfield, Fiorentina lose the ball. The ball falls to Paqueta, who plays a brilliant pass onto Bowen, who has clear run onto goal. And he even mishits it slightly, but because of that mishit, the ball bounces right onto uh, Terragiano and into the net. And West Ham win it. Fiorentina try, uh, but they cannot really create any uh, good chance anymore. They really tried. They played the long, the, 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 the long balls, but again, it was always the last pass missing for Fiorentina. And so West Ham win by being the more clever side. I, I would say they decided okay we don't really want to take part that much into the in, in, in game but we're gonna hit you on the counter attack uh, and for me Piragi is the tragic hero because not only did he get hit uh, he also uh, made the pamper penalty and then you know with everyone could see his yellow uh, his yellow his purple head going there and they lose a the second final in, in a row both finals 2-1 both rather unlucky because I think they were good to win. They were definitely good to win at least one title there. But uh, when you saw the celebrations by Western, especially for David Moyes afterwards, I you could clearly see it means a lot to him. So I don't want to be ne too negative about it. I just was really bothered by the people acting out with the throwing the cups and that this, I think, was not properly handled. That much I have to say. There's also another curious thing that happened in both Euro, Euro, European finals that um, Milan players from the early Gattuso years, from the Gattuso and even before, so you know the end of the Banta era of Milan, played a crucial part. We had Suso scoring the equalizer. He was a huge part for Milan about five years ago. Now we had Bonaventura, who also was part of this Milan team, um, scoring the equalizer. And of course, Paquetao was also for Milan, having his foot into a pass onto Jared uh, Bowen. So uh, Banta era Milan players are actually stepping up, which on one side, you know, I always want to do players that play at Milan, wanna, want them to do well afterwards. Uh, but you know, there's a little bit of a bleeding heart as well. Um, but I thought this in, in interesting. I was uh, I, I was thinking, uh, looking forward, um, what does this mean for the Champions League final? Well, I, I can't think of one player, the Vermin for Inter. Is Inter going to win it? Let's see. <laughs> we'll talk about that in the Champions League final preview. But at the moment, yes, uh, Italian teams have lost two finals, um, which as a fan of the Serie, of Serie A, I'm a little, a little bit sad, but I don't want to take anything away from West Ham. Uh, one last thing, I actually was hoping that West Ham playing orange pants with their jersey, the white, the all white look didn't look quite right if you have this orange going down, and I don't know what prevented them from doing so. 
because even in Fiorentina all purple the orange would have worked just fine and I think it would have made for a much uh, nicer visual picture. Again, congratulations West Ham uh, for ending a title drought. You are in the Europa League next season. Uh, you salvaged your season this way. And again, I think the Europa Conference League is a success. It is a successful tour to tournament. You see that uh, teams that go into it actually take it quite seriously. seriously and I think it, it presents an add, added value. Yes, the group stage might not be the most appealing one, uh, even for me at times when I like European football, but uh, as soon as it comes to, to the knock, to knocker stage, I actually have to say I'm fully behind it. The latest qual quarterfinals, there's great entertainment in there. So in any case, let me know your thoughts on West Ham's win yes, yesterday. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to this channel and hitting the little bell icon so that you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.